Now it's autumn, and just a few months ago, there was a little hawklet in that nest, the so-called Sydney nest, that was raised by an eagle family. Let's take a look right back. Our story starts on May 29th, when a local resident, Shay Ripstra, went by the nest to take a closer look at the eaglets. To her surprise, when she took a picture, there were two fluffy small heads on there. They seemed like really small eaglets. And she says, not knowing better, she just took it home and started searching. And of course, a few days later, the news broke that these were red-tailed hawk. This was a red-tailed hawk. But then, Sherry, who would have known better? I certainly wouldn't have. Although I've taken pictures of many eaglets, I would have never suspected a red-tailed hawk in the nest. So the story goes on. Two days later, Linda Robson goes past the nest. You mind first, just... The first one to get the hawk on video, video. yes, yes. yes. Uh, tell me yes. what happened. Well, we were, we were here visiting the, the beach and we had a look at the uh, nest tree. You, there's, a, there's a little opening there where you uh -huh. can see the nest. And uh, the mother, sorry, yeah, the okay. mother came in with some food and she was feeding this little fluff ball at the corner of the nest. And we knew at that point that the eagles wouldn't be that small. And we thought, what the heck is that? And uh, when we got home and looked at the video, uh -huh. my husband thought that perhaps it was an, an eaglet that was, uh, that was a mutant that didn't grow up and properly. when was that about? When was that was on the, on the 31st of May. And Linda then sends the material over to David Hancock, an eagle biologist from the Hancock Wildlife Foundation. He takes a look and there's no doubt in his mind, this is a red-tailed hawk. Luckily enough, he informs me very quickly and soon thereafter, I take my special equipment and I specialized in live broadcasting. I was the only one able to do live broadcasting over to the Sydney Nest to do my first broadcast with him together. And thanks for all your interaction. That's the wonderful thing about live streaming. So many interesting questions came in and it inspired me to go there again and again for the next two months. And here I've got David Hancock with me, a real eagle specialist, the best one in the world in fact. Look at that little head there. <laughs> I'll zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, that's... There they are, right next to each other. Can you see the three? Thank you for letting us. So, yeah, it's, isn't it amazing? I, I, wouldn't, I didn't believe I would be able to show you. I didn't want to announce this. Um, it's going to focus a little bit better. My, my autofocus is not working for some reason, but it doesn't matter. I'm focusing by hand. There you go. You've got all three now in the, in the same picture. <laughs> and, the, and the third eaglet is over on the left. And questions were just pouring in. For example, how did the hawk even get into the nest? And can a hawk live on fish? And what happens when it grows up, when it starts fledging, flying? Will it behave like a hawk or an eagle? And will it migrate away? And so on and so on. So let's tackle the questions one by one as we look at the footage. Uh, Professor David Bird, can you tell us a little bit more f as an introduction about well, yourself? I basically ran a, a bird of prey center at uh, McDonald campus in McGill for uh, about 40 years and um, when I retired in August 2013 I moved out to Vancouver Island because of uh, a number of reasons and um, but I studied birds of prey for about 45 years and I'm continuing to study them uh, by using drones. I mean actually um, working with uh, other people to uh, to uh, use drones to peer into to nests and to, to count eggs, for example, and young and raptor nests and to count seabirds and track birds and so on. Interesting, uh, the, the Professor Bird, that you actually live very close to the Sydney nest. Yeah, it was just a piece of luck. <laughs> and I mean, I, I, I'm actually very grateful. How did you do it? I was going to ask. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very grateful to both you and David for, uh, for bringing me in on it. And, uh, and uh, I've had a lot of fun with it. I've, I've enjoyed interacting with the people that show up to watch the nest, the local neighbors and other, right. other tourists that come in now. It's a very famous nest. So the very first question is, how did the hawk get into the nest? And that has many different cases. The first hypothesis would be, is a red-tailed hawk a cuckoo? What we're talking about here is, Correct. is egg dumping. Yes, right. egg, egg dumping. dumping is, a, is a, uh, a thing that you see in cowbirds and cuckoos and so on, right. and also by a number of duck species. Right. But birds of prey do not engage in egg dumping. There is no scientific evidence that I'm aware of ah, that birds of prey deliberately lay their eggs in the nest of another raptor species. How else could the hawk have gotten into the nest? The next hypothesis would be, could eagles 
have captured a female red-tailed hawk and brought her to the nest. And we know that there were two eggs and she would have laid those eggs in her dying moments. And I know for a fact that it's impossible, well, it's, I won't say impossible, but really, really difficult for a red-tailed hawk female to have two well-developed eggs in her oviduct at the same time. She might have one that's ready to lay and another one that's going to have a shell put on it, but that would not happen while a hawk was in the death rolls because we now know that there were, were originally two red-tailed hawk young right. in that nest. One has since disappeared. So I, and I think you agree with me, we can throw that hypothesis out the window. We can also rule out that somebody put the birds there because David has checked the tree, there's no climbing marks on it, it's a very busy neighborhood and, uh, and so consequently and, and, they, didn't oh, get no, there but, by any, they didn't get there by any other means other than those bald eagles bring okay. in there. But David of course is an expert in drones and he does live nearby so there's the possible that Dr. Bird <laughs> actually <laughs> orchestrated the movement of a couple of Here red tails uh, or red tail eggs and moved them in there by a drone. Now some of the people say it wasn't it wasn't a white it, was, it wasn't a, a human being it was a Martian who did it. So these are two other theories that we can't totally rule out. And the fourth hypothesis seems rather interesting. Could the eagles have raided a nearby red hawk tail nest, taken the two chicks in their talons, and brought them back to their eagle nest for a food source later for the young? And I think you and I are now in 100% agreement that this was probably a case of what's called non-lethal predation, whereby uh, one or two of those parent bald eagles raided a local red-tailed hawk nest. It could even be the one that's on territory in my backyard, essentially, or the one that's a little further down by the, um, the uh, airport way uh, on Pat Bay Highway. Um, and what they've probably done is, is brought back both those young, maybe even more, but uh, likely they just, they, they either took them all at once or they went back twice and kept bringing them back. And the idea was, was to feed those little red-tailed hawk young to their own eaglets. But then, of course, uh, we do know that um, uh, these little red-tailed hawks were likely dumped into the nest, but I don't think they really knew what kind of danger they were in. I think oh, that they, sure they and, and they, all they wanted to do was be fed, so they started begging like crazy to these, you know, in the nest. And the urge to to feed young is very powerful in birds of prey. Um, it's it's um, you can take young from other birds of prey and put them underneath another species, and like in other words, we call that fostering. Rehab people do that to help raise the young in a, in a more normal way than hand rearing them. Uh, we've done it uh, trying to re reintroduce um, captive bred endangered species and so on. So it's very powerful. So the hormonal urge to kill that hawk and feed it to its own young was overrode by a stronger hormonal urge to feed it because it was begging. And that is, uh, I think, the hypothesis that you and I agree on. But then, would the eagle talons not rip apart the little chicks while they're transporting them back to the nest. And at some point he leaves the food at the nest site, on the nest site, and the female takes it from him or picks it up and tears it apart and feeds it to the chicks. And on our cameras, many, many times, the, the voles, the mice, the ducklings, the goslings that have been brought in as food have been left for a few seconds or a few minutes and pretty soon, you can see the head look up and the, the prey species is assessing the fact that, hey, I think this is a good moment to leave, and he runs off and jumps off the nest, and, and it's <laughs> gone. Now, it's very apparent from this that dozens commonly come into a nest in one nesting season of live prey that are not dead. Oh, oh now Mum just arrived. <laughs> so, oh, the juveniles got hold of her head. <laughs> oh, Mum, oh, did not like that. She just, she just attacked the kid. I've never seen one do that. No. How rare is this event? How often does it actually happen? Well, it means that uh, a fellow named Jim um, uh, Watson, I believe, um, and some colleagues out of uh, the Washington uh, Wildlife Department published a paper in the Journal of Raptor Research on this very thing. They had actually witnessed red-tailed hawks being raised to fledging age by bald eagles in not one, not two, but three different cases. They also cited the case um, 
uh, one that was published the year before in Michigan, but there seems to be some debate about whether uh, the people who published that actually knew it was a red-tailed hawk or not. It might have been another species or whatever, but certainly if this has already been published in the scientific literature, um, it, as a matter of fact, it's probably, uh, it probably happens more frequently than we think it does. Yes, Professor Bird, very well researched and completely correct. I contacted Jim Watson and he did send me those three papers. And one of these three papers clearly refers right back to August 1994 and reports how they found and tracked a, a red-tailed chick in an eagle's nest until it left the nest. So yes, maybe it is not as rare as we think. And um, accepting the fact that this little red-tailed hawk is likely a male, I had a good look at it yesterday, yeah, think, and I'm pretty so. sure it's a male just by uh, it's a slightly smaller size than the female. That's common in birds of prey, in diurnal birds of prey. And secondly, um, in a male like that, usually the head is a, more of a sculpted thing with the, with the body, like the shoulder area. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's more distinct on the body, sort of like the same way owls, you can sex them that way, great horned owls. And so I think we're in agreement that this guy is likely a male. If people want to call him Stephen, uh, Stephen Hawking, that's fine. <laughs> but um, bottom line is, is that um, since it's a male, it will be the one that will set up a territory somewhere or take over a territory from another male and it will display and a female will come in and uh, it will present okay. food to it and and maybe show it different places to nest and then eventually they'll build a nest together. This is a decent neighborhood. Yes. We don't have a red light district no, here. No, we don't. Jim, thank <laughs> but you got a lot of peeping toms. I have to keep my clothes on in my house now. Is hunting small mammals an instinctive behavior of hawklings, or will he need to learn by observation? Very well, interesting question. I mean, certainly, um, uh, that's a very good question mm -hmm. to ask. I mean, yeah. the fact is, is that both bald eagles mm -hmm. and red-tailed hawks as a species are very, very opportunistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, red-tailed hawks, if you look at the, the dietary menu of red-tailed hawks in the scientific literature, they'll eat anything from dead stuff, carrion, to snakes, to mice, mm -hmm. uh, probably even insects and so on, and I'll bet even even detritus along the shoreline mm -hmm. and so on. But that's not really a common place to find a red-tailed hawk sitting along a beach walking around. And this little guy here, who's now left the nest, has been seen walking around on the sand flats, <laughs> poking in among the seaweed. That's very bald eagle. <laughs> that, that's, that's the next point here, is that this little red-tailed hawk has survived in that nest mm -hmm. for two reasons. Mm -hmm. Number one, there's plenty of food to go around, right. so he hasn't um, basically become dinner for one of the other eaglets. In other words, they're getting fed well. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so, and the other second thing is this little hawk mm -hmm. is suffering from a little big man complex. In other words, he thinks he's a bald eagle. Isn't that incredible? Look at that, look at that. Look at that. It is wonderful. I have never ever seen anything like this. <laughs> this is incredible. Okay, let me just refocus it. Make sure we have everything. Look at that. Oh my goodness. He's fighting now. He's fighting. He's fighting. Right there. There he is. There he is. My goodness, look at that. Okay, where is he now? And he's off. Where did he go? A behavior of most predatory birds. Okay. They mantle in okay. order to cover up the food mm -hmm. so another passing bird doesn't see this uh, trail of feathers, this circle of feathers, which instantly tells a passing predator, ooh, there's something there on the ground, dead that, or maybe being eaten, that I can 
take for food. They cover it all up, and that's called mantling. And you can see this on our live cameras. The young eaglets mantle all the time to protect their food. Once they start to eat on their own, they protect their food from their sibling. Brilliant question. What about the reverse? Now they they watched the, these eaglets have have grown up with with our, our little hawklet. What happens to their imprint? You know, uh, is, I, this, this is no, a great. They, they'll, <laughs> they'll they'll mostly imprint on the parents. Oh, oh I so see. Okay, th those three okay. eaglets are going to grow up pretty uh, much normal. No more, They're not right. going to think that hey, maybe I'm a red-tailed hawk. That's not going to happen. Is there any way to ban this red-tailed hawk to follow it? Well, I, as a scientist, <laughs> yes. uh, and, and David's a scientist as well, we're working together for tracking bald eagles, I would have loved to have had a climber go up there and put some sort of a, right. at the very least, mm -hmm. uh, a band on the bird's right. legs to identify it, so mm -hmm. if we ever catch it again, or someone sees a red-tailed hawk flying around the local neighborhood with a band on its leg, it would probably be the only one around with that mark on its leg. Even better would, would have been to put on some sort of a satellite tracking device or a or a one off that bounces off cell towers, because we would both love to know uh, <laughs> the fate of that little guy. I mean, I w watched him yesterday, and uh, he's in very, very good health. He's uh -huh. in great health. Yeah. He's got a beautiful plumage. And what that tells me mm -hmm. is that, assuming that they probably did get a, a fair bit of a fish diet, right. which is sort of a little bit strange for a red-tailed yes, hawk, it, is. Um, it obviously agreed with him, with the fish diet, because <laughs> he's in great shape. Well, um, red-tailed hawks generally follow the, the young, follow the parents around for four or five, even six weeks, following, watching, getting, in a sense, lessons. That doesn't really happen with wilderness eagles. It may happen for a few days around a nest with a bald eagle mm -hmm. getting food on the nearby shoreline and the, and the juvenile eagle seeing it. But usually, once they attack the parent on the ground, uh, 500 yards or whatever it is, when they see them eating and sitting on a fish, on the rock somewhere, and if a juvenile attacks them, that's the, that's the key, right, right then and there, when the next day the adults will have abandoned their chicks. It's not a big period of teaching from the eagles, but there's quite a big period of teaching with hawks, and that's going to play a negative effect on it. The hawklet, which some call spunky, other Stephen Hawking, left Sydney on July 28th, and then August 6th came. Sydney's famous red-tailed hawk, who survived growing up in an eagle's nest, got his very own day. The town of Sydney declared this day as Bald Eagle Hawklet Day in the community. That same day, members of the Hancock Wildlife Foundation planned a neighborhood get-together to share the many stories, images, and videos about the hawk. Yes, the amazing hawk had now gained local, national, and international fame. Leslie Ames, David Hancock of the Hancock Wildlife Foundation will take place. Well, that's the eagle. They're talking about an eagle there. Hang on. Yeah, there, was, there was an eagle flying. That was one from the nest, just as a hello. That was fantastic. So <laughs> that's the interruption. Therefore, I, Stephen Price, Mayor of the Town of Sydney, do hereby proclaim Sunday, August the 6th, 2017, as Bald Eagle Hawklet Day in Sydney, British Columbia. Yeah. So, do you, do you think the the, the uh, hawklet is fine? What what's well, your speculation? The good news is, is David told me that uh, uh, an 11 year old girl or so has seen the hawk chasing after a squirrel, and that's a, a very natural prey of the uh, red-tailed hawk. And in fact, that was one of the ones I was hoping to go after because there's a lot of squirrels around here and a lot of rabbits. So. Um, I think it's a good sign that that bird's probably doing well even today. It's, it's probably in the area. People have been asking me how would we recognize it if we see this bird. And I think the thing is is that if a red-tailed hawk male shows up in this particular area and is using all the same familiar perches and same behaviors, 
and likely that'll be our bird, even if we saw it in its adult plumage. Uh, you're the little girl that saw the hawk chasing the eagle? Yeah. Oh, good. Well, we wanted to talk to you about it. Do you mind talking to us about it? You... Um, okay. Okay. So, so first off, you're... Um, no, it was like right by our tree on the corner. It was on the um, telephone wire. It was... The hawk was on the telephone. Yeah, and he was trying to look for the baby squirrel. Right. And it was really cool, and every time we were talking, he just went up in front. The little squirrel went higher and higher, and it was so cool. Wow. Yeah, but the squirrel got away. Uh, yeah, he somehow he he chased off when we were talking. Isn't that beautiful? And we have this other picture, and this is by this, um, I thought his name was David, but I have to check. This is 92-year-old gentleman. You, you are the person who took this other photo. Can, can you just oh, hold it up? Him. Yes. Can you please hold it up? Because this is another, another incredible image. There you go. And this is David, right? Yeah. So we had a Philip, and now this is David, who took this marvelous picture here. I want all the photos they're saying. <laughs> Can they contact you by email? Is that possible? Oh, yeah. He's very modest. <laughs> He's very modest. It's incredible. And the good news, funny thing is, when I started this thing a week, weeks ago, I had this green shirt on too. I visited my friend Glenn Browning, a well-known avian taxidermist who has won world championships and specializes in raptors. He was just mounting an eagle, which took many days of work with high precision and an eye for detail. Glenn took out his mounted red tail hawk and put the eagle right next to it, thus giving us a much better comparison for size. In reality, the eagle looks much bigger when it has its wings spread out like the hawk in this case. Hawks are known to migrate, and since it is likely that the hawklet is a male, he would probably return to his nesting area to assert his territory. It is estimated that there are over two million red-tailed hawks in North America. Despite their sizes, the biggest females weigh only around three pounds. Eagles and hawks don't get along well, Thus, it is surprising to see how well our hawklet survived. And so the story of the hawklet ends, at least for now. The hawklet's life went well beyond the nest, touching the local community of Sydney, North America and the world, bringing people and scientists together. So, do look more and wonder about the incredible nature around us. There are so many wonderful surprises.